I'm really excited about this episode. I've been planning this episode and, and, and planning to do this episode now for, for a number of months actually, because I really want to talk about um, Lightroom, but more importantly, how to visualize images and create images, Lightroom being one of those tools. Okay, so before I go through how I edited this image in Lightroom, um, and I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks in Lightroom as well, then I wanna talk about visualization. Um, a lot of you are probably thinking that's just a load of crap, really, but it isn't. It's, it is really, really important to be able to visualize the image that you're intending to get b before you press the shutter button, because otherwise it ends up just being a snap. You, 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 you end up just taking a record of the location. Lightroom is just a tool to be able to take that digital negative and then convey the mood that you had and the, the feelings that you had when you took that image. So um, whether that's a cold feeling or whether that's just a feeling that um, it was miserable on the day and dull. I mean, if you go back to this video that I, I produced, then the final image that I had, the image that I took out of my car window, was one of just the dullest day that I've ever had. It was a rainiest day that I've ever done any photography on. And I knew when I took that image how I wanted the final result to appear. And by, do, by doing that, then it made me think a little bit more about the composition, about the subject that I wanted in that composition, about the light and, and what type of light I wanted to wait for. I didn't want sunlight to suddenly come on, 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 on this image. I didn't want to wait too long. Um, so, so that visualization really helps because it's part of that entire creative process from pressing the button on the shutter to getting the print out at the other end. So really important to really, really think about it. You've just got to remember that Lightroom doesn't make that great image from any, any file as well. Lightroom is just one of the tools on the way. You've got to have a good composition. You've got to have a good subject. You've got to have good light on that subject and the timing of that image has got to be right. So, so what's really interesting and, um, is the, the images that I showed in my last video, um, they were taken on two mornings. And um, the first morning I met um, a guy called James Green on um, the top of Loughrigg Fell. Um, and if you haven't um, seen his work, then check out his Instagram. He, he's, he's a fantastic uh, photographer. And it was really interesting to see his portrayal of that morning compared to mine. So, the, the, you know, we were in the same place at the same time and we were pretty much in the same location in that place. Um, and we took you know, fairly similar images really, but the result of those two images after we processed them in Lightroom were quite different. So you can see that James is, is you know, very different tones to mine. It's got, I think, a, 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 a little bit of a, a warmer feel than mine. And, and it's just a very different type of image. And all those things, create a different look and a different feel to that image. Now, that's exactly what James wanted to portray. You know, he does lots of images in this style on his um, Instagram feed and they're just absolutely fantastic. In fact, I love his image. I think I prefer it when I look back at it to my image, but my image it represents the feeling and the mood and what I was trying to get from that morning. And what I'm trying to say here is that two photographers will produce different things in Lightroom. So there's no right answer to what you do in Lightroom. There's lots of different ways of doing things. So the other morning, on the Monday morning when it was really cold, I, 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 I was really pleased with my images. Um, and I've got some incredible feedback on the one that I'm gonna show you how I edited in, in Lightroom, which I didn't show in last week's video. If you don't know Matthew, then um, in the UK here, he won the 10th Landscape Photographer of the Year, which is an amazing achievement, and his images are just stunning. He, he does a lot of wildlife photography, but he also does amazing landscapes. Um, and he happened to be there on that morning on the Monday as well, which I didn't know at the time. Don't know how we didn't bump into each other. But um, I noticed on Twitter, it was about a few days after I posted one of my images that he'd posted an image from the same location. And his image was 
and it was quite different to mine really and, and we actually spoke about it on Twitter and, and we, we did reasonably similar things in Lightroom but the ultimate output was, was quite different. Now his composition's slightly different to mine um, but it's not, I don't think it's the composition of this image which gives it a different feel. It's how we process them differently. Now again, I don't think there's a better image. You know, the, the both images I think are really, really good. I do think though that they convey a, a, a slightly different mood and a slightly different feeling. I think um, Matthews is, you know, a, a, a slightly warmer image, um, you know, but, but you still do get that feeling that, that obviously it was, it was a cold morning. Um, it's a very calm image, I think. Whereas I think m my image and what I was trying to portray in my image was just the cold of the morning. I had freezing cold hands when I took this image and, and that was the overriding feeling I had. I, and, and um, you know, it was really still, um, and misty and the mist was just hanging and that's what I wanted to portray. What I wanted to show is that two photographers can go with similar camera equipment to the similar location at the similar time and the ultimate output can be very different and so you know what Matthew might say in Lightroom might be different to what I say so there's no right or wrong answer to what you do in Lightroom. Now there are some fundamentals and there's some fundamental rules which I'm going to go through but ultimately you've got to generate your own style so really think about that and really think about what what style you want and what mood you want to convey with that image. And then that makes it a lot easier when you go into Lightroom to then produce that end result. Okay, so let's get onto Lightroom and let's have a look at this image and see how I created it through Lightroom. Okay, so here we've got the image and the first thing you'll probably notice is that it's really dark. So if we look at the histogram up here, you can see that I underexposed it basically, which isn't very good. I usually bracket my exposures. Unfortunately, I didn't in this case, and it's not a good idea to underexpose images. I like to expose them as close to the right hand side as I can without clipping the highlights. The reason behind that is it's good to expose to the right. Now, there's many articles talking about this, but basically, you get more tones um, in the right hand side of the image. So in the highlights, there's a lot more tonal detail than there is in the shadow area. I, I'm gonna change this to white, the, the background here. Now, this is a bit of a personal preference, but it does make a difference to how you're editing the image. I, I, I usually have it set as white, the background, and then it mimics how it's going to be seen either online or social media, which is usually a white background on my website, which is a white background, or when I print it and get it framed, which is usually a white background. Um, I've obviously made sure I've calibrated my monitor, um, but I also uh, ensure that I've set it to the, the correct brightness as well. So um, on my iMac, I always make sure that I've got five bars of brightness at the bottom here. And that makes a big difference. You've got to think about it as an iterative process as well. You're probably not going to get it right on the first pass or the second pass, maybe the third pass, but it's very much Lightroom an iterative process. So the first thing I will do is crop it, and I may crop it again later, but I like to crop my image before I do anything else. So I think I'm gonna crop it to be a vertical composition, because I just think I don't like these trees on the right-hand side. So there we go, I've got, I've got a, an initial crop, and I'll probably do more cropping later. Um, the next thing is to set the white balance, but in this case, it's difficult to set the white balance, because there's there's not a lot of color in the image at the moment. I'm going to bring that color into the image. So I might come back to this later. Um, and then I'm going to just do some basic first pass stuff. So I'm probably just going to increase the exposure slightly. I'm going to reduce the highlights slightly. And again, I'll probably come back to this. I'm going to significantly increase the shadows um, about there. I am going to increase the whites and that's why I decrease the highlights because as I increase the whites I can bring back detail by decreasing the highlights so I'm going to set that around about 45 that'll do and I'm going to reduce the highlights a little bit more to bring some detail into that sky so already I've got some color in it now I've got a little bit of a, a representation of the, those sort of apricot colors that I saw on the day I don't think I've ever described a sky as apricot before but there we go and then I would carry on going down here. I'm going to come back to the curves 
I'm going to come back to my HSL colors as well. I'm not going to split tone this image. I am going to come back to the sharpening, but I'm here I'm going to remove chromatic aberration and I'm going to enable profile correction. So that's it, that's my first pass. So that's fairly, fairly basic really. The next thing that I would do is I'd usually do color correction, but in this case, I'm gonna bring out the color by using some gradient filters. So I'm gonna probably put three gradient filters on this. So I'm gonna click the gradient um, tool here. And the first one I want to do is for the upper part of the image. So I am going to just create a gradient just about here. Just make sure that these are all set to zero. And a top tip here is that if you just double click on the name, then it, if I just change that, double click on it, it sets it back to zero. So that's really useful to know. And what I'm trying to do here is use two contrasting colors at either side of the color wheel to create a sort of cold, but yet calm feeling image. So it's a really good idea to think about um, the color wheel when you're, when you're taking shots, but also when you're editing those shots as well, because small tweaks in color and just bringing a green slightly to a different hue or a blue to a different hue or an orange or a yellow can make a really big difference to the feel of an image. So get a color wheel, have a look at it, look at the opposite sides of that color wheel and see what colors complement them each other a lot more. So what I'm trying to do, I've got or, or, orange and um, teal. I'm, I'm trying to get those two colors to sort of complement each other really well in this image. But the whole idea is that I'm trying to create a different feel for the bottom of the image and the top of the image because the bottom of the image is the, is the cold, misty grass and the top of the image is where the sun's coming through. Okay, so I'm gonna change, I want to just change the green down a little bit. Again, I might come back to these in my second iteration and move them a little bit. I am gonna decrease the exposure a little bit of the sky, but I'm gonna change that in a little bit. Um, I'm probably gonna increase it with another filter. I'm gonna reduce the contrast because I don't really want a really contrasty image here. The whole idea is to get sort of a pastel image. Um, I'm gonna go again, reduce the highlights even further. Um, I'm gonna significantly increase the shadows again. Um, I'm gonna increase the whites quite significantly. And I'm gonna slightly increase the blacks. That's looking quite Good. And I also want to add some clarity into this. Now, clarity is something you've got to be a little bit careful with. You can make something look completely different with clarity. Now, usually in an image like this, I wouldn't add a lot of clarity, but what I want to do is the cloud just in the background in this area here, I just want to pick out some of that detail a little bit more. Now, I could do a local adjustment there, but I think just doing it here is gonna work quite well. So I'm gonna increase the clarity there. Now, clarity, what clarity does is it does contrast in the um, mid-tones of the, of, the, of the image. So it doesn't really change a lot to do with highlights or really dark areas. It looks at the mid-tones of the image. So I want to add just, um, I want to add another graduated filter. And I quite often do this as well. And when I'm looking at skies, I'll, I'll add more than one. Now this is something that I'm gonna alter in multiple ways. I am going to slightly increase the exposure a little bit there. I'm gonna reduce the contrast significantly reduce the highlights again. So the sky is getting closer now to what I want it to look like. I'm gonna increase the whites, slightly increase the blacks. And that's probably okay for now. I'm gonna do some more color correction in a minute. So this, if I just hover over it, this is just for this, this bot bottom image. Now, what I'm going to do here is this is where I'm going to now change the color of this bottom area. So I'm gonna significantly change the temperature of the bottom. So I'm gonna change it to probably minus 22. Now you can see already that that's created a very different feel to the image. I've now got this very cold area at the bottom and this warmer sort of um, very light orange color at the top. Now I need to get these colors correct, but I'm, I'm getting there now. Um, again, I think I'm just gonna make it a little slightly more green as well. I don't want it to be that sort of purple color. I want it to be more of a green color. Slightly increase the exposure. Slightly increase the contrast. I want to reduce the highlights. Again, I think I need to increase the shadows even more in this area, bringing out some, air, some detail in this bit here. Um, 
I'm going to significantly increase the whites, yeah, decrease the highlights and increase the whites even more. And I am going to reduce the blacks here. I now want to increase the clarity of this. Now again, you've got to be a little bit careful. I want it to feel quite sharp, quite crispy, you know, like the morning was. It was a crispy morning, so I'm going to increase the clarity here to around about 45. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is um, look at the tone curve. I will then go on to the colour correction. So what I want to, what I'm trying to do now with the tone curve is create a little bit more um, definition in the graduation of those tones in the image. Um, at the moment it's too dark, so I, I want to lift up pretty much all the tones apart from the very, very black. So I might add a number of points on here. So I'm going to increase it there. I'm going to add another point there, another one there. Just messed about with this. So what I've done is I've increased the brightness of those um, areas of the image, so that the, the highlights and the midtones quite significantly. But I, but I want the blacks to remain fairly fairly dark so that this adds a little bit of contrast. If you can see as I just move that and that adds some contrast, I'm going to add another one there and just darken it down. So what I've done there is I've created, if I just switch this on and off by using this little button here, you can see that I've created some contrast in, in the image. Now by doing that, what I've done is I've probably blown out that a little bit. Now you can click this button here and you can see that those tones are all very similar in this sky. So what I want to do is I just want to reduce highlights just even further. Um, I'll probably slightly reduce the whites as well. Okay, that's looking better. So the next thing to do is start having a look at the colors. So this orange is just not quite right. So I'm going to go to the HSL slide here. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to change the colors that are um, orange, yellow, green, aqua, etc. in your image. So you can change individual areas of the image with the same um, colour value. It's very different to the thing at the bottom, which is the camera calibration, which also allows you to change colours, but this changes the colour of every pixel in the image. What I want to do is just change the individual um, colours. So I could pick the sky colour here by using this picker tool, but I know that I just want to change this orange here and I want to reduce it down to make it more I want to get away from the, the very the very obvious orange colour because that's not what I thought it was like in the morning. So I'm going to go down to about minus 24. That's about right. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a little bit of vibrance because I just want to just slightly increase the saturation of just the, the middle tonal values of the images. So I'm going to slightly increase the vibrance. Now, if I go back down to this, I'm going to reduce this down to about 24. And it's starting to look like I want it to look now. Now, this makes a significant difference to the sky. I just want to slightly change that. The blues in the image at the bottom. So I'm going to just slightly increase that. There, it's starting to look really cold and frosty around this area here, which is exactly how I imagined it. Good. Okay, we're not far off with that. So I think the next thing to do is, is sharpening. So the best thing to do with sharpening is if you zoom in on the image, here I can see you know some branches and I can see whether there's any noise I want to get rid of. So I'm, I'm gonna go and sharpen the image. Now this is a good um, little tip for you. If you click Option and then move the button, you can see the impact it has um, on your, on your image. Now I always leave the radius at one, otherwise you start to get all sorts of artifacts. But detail's a good one and masking to, to keep your finger on option and then change it. And you can start to see, as I change this, if I move it up here, I can start to see it's gonna affect everything, all the little tiny details in the image, which I don't want. I just really want it to affect the branches and a little bit of the foreground. So that is about right, about 44 I'd say, which is quite high. And then, but now I've got quite a lot of noise in this area. So again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click press option again, and then I'm gonna increase the mask in. And what you'll see is all the dark areas are areas that are not gonna be as impacted by this. So I'm gonna increase this to about 48. And then that means that all this area here is not gonna get sharpened. Okay, well, it's getting there now. I think it, it, it's starting to represent 
exactly how I felt and the, the image that I sort of pre-visualized in my head when, when I took this image. Um, so I'm really, I'm really, really pleased. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and make a cup of tea because I think it's a good idea to sort of step away from your computer, go and take a break and then come back and have a look at the image. Sometimes it's a good idea just to wait a day and have a look at the image again. Okay, I've got my cup of tea. So, now I've come back to it, I not, it's not quite right in, this, in the center of the image. So what I'm going to do, and you now I, I have actually done the sharpening, and I usually don't do the sharpening until the last thing I do, um, but, but I don't think that really matters. What, I, what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm just going to um, create, create a new adjustment brush. I'm gonna reduce the size of it a little bit here, and I'm just gonna paint that over this area here. I think I need to slightly increase the exposure of this area. Yeah, that's looking a lot better. Don't want to overdo it though. I'm going to reduce the contrast of it because I want it to be sort of more sort of mysterious. Um, I'm going to significantly reduce the highlights just to create a little bit more definition in those highlights. Now I want to add some more clarity in this area just to bring out some more definition and that's starting to work well. So I think that's pretty much the image that I had in my head when I took the photo. So when you go out and you're trying to visualize this image, how do you do that? Well, I think it's important to have a, a appreciation for the things around you that isn't just the subject. So don't think that's an amazing tree. You, know, you do need to think about the light and how the light might change the mood of that, that image and, and think about whether it's worth waiting for it to go cloudy or waiting for some sunlight to hit the light. Is it better if you come back when it's misty? Um, uh, you know, late, late, later in the morning or, or, or wait until the mist clears. I think that's going to ultimately impact on your mood. You've got to think about the textures, you know, the textures of the grass, are they going to add to the image? Are they going to help you portray that story of that image? Um, is it not worth having any foreground in it? Because does that, you know, detract away from what you're trying to portray? So, so it's a good idea to have a, a, a more general understanding of your, of your environment when you're taking that, that image. I think that really helps. Now there's, there's different ways that you can do this. I, I, do, I do think that um, the modern way of doing it is, is using your phone, you know, you can, it certainly helps to crop a little bit. So certainly for composition, to be able to crop and then see what it looks like when you've cropped, because often you can look at a landscape and it could be a big sort of panoramic view that you've got from these eyes, these eyes, you know, we, <laughs> don't know why I did that, <laughs> from your eyes. Um, and it's a much more expansive view than you get when you put on a lens and go to a, a particular focal length on that lens. So being able to visualize that either through the viewfinder on your camera, but I think that doesn't work so well. Using your iPhone does work quite well and you can zoom in and out a little bit just to try and sort of crop it a little bit. But the other thing that, that's worth trying as well, and I occasionally do this, and I, I do think it really helps from a composition point of view, is, is just tr try and just cut out a bit of card like this and, and look through it. And I think you'll find that that can really help with your composition. It can really help um, get away from distractions because sometimes you can look at a tree and you think that tree's amazing. Your brain's really clever. It focuses in on that tree and try and, and sort of Get, gets rid of all the things around that tree and you think this is going to be an amazing an image. You get it back, you look at it in Lightroom and you think, oh, there's a branch there or that branch is really distracting. And you've sort of, because you've been, you've had all these sort of external distractions, but your eyes been focused on this tree, it's then quite difficult to visualize what the composition of that image is going to be like. So just taking a card out can make a really big difference. So here is the final image. I am so pleased with it. I think it just really captures the mood of that morning. Um, really, really does. I, I, I really, it's one of my favorite prints that I've done this year, I think. So this is gonna go up on my website and um, become a limited edition print. So, you know, if you're interested, then please go and have a look at it. It really helps if, if um, you purchase my prints or go to my workshops. It's how I make my living. So I really do appreciate all the prints that have been bought today. It's blown me away, really. Um, and I really hope that this can be hanging up on somebody's wall sometime shortly. It will make a great Christmas present. Okay, thanks 
ever so much for watching. I really, really, really appreciate all the people that have watched over the last few months. I'm getting there, I'm getting close to 10K subscribers, so thanks so much for that. Um, I'll leave you with another image that I took on the morning that I didn't show in last week's video, which again is really, really great image. I, I was really, really pleased. And remember, go out, get your, let me grab it, get your card, and start visualizing that end image. Start thinking about the things around you, the textures of things around you, how things interact together, and how you want that end image to be. And you may be surprised. You may find that you create some stunning photos. Okay, until next week, see you next time. Doesn't get any better than this. <laughs> That's the best job in the world, right?